Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock and it is time for a magic stuff. And today I'm gonna to be doing a video that a lot of people have requested. It is three best tricks that you have never seen before with double faces. You know, I started the three best tricks series a while ago and a lot of people have said how much they enjoy it. And, and last time I did three tricks with double blank cards and that was really well received. Well, I'm doing double faces today, and there's so much you can do with double face cards. But most people tend to go for either Anniversary Waltz or McDonald's Aces. And there's so many other routines and so many other tricks with double face cards that you've probably never seen before. Um, so on this, on this video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present three of my favourites. There are a lot of older routines. Um, I'll let you know where to get them from, and I'll tell you why they're good. And if you like this video, let me know, because I know so many routines with double faces, I could probably do a follow-up video down the road as well. But without further ado, let's have a look at the first trick. Okay, so the first routine is by a David Acker, who is an amazingly talented Canadian magician. He doesn't do as much in magic these days. I think he's more on the comedy club circuit. Uh, but David Acker has brought out so many routines and tricks and books over the years, and I don't see many people doing his routines. Well, in uh, Random Acts of Magic, which is one of his books, he brought out a uh, he published a routine called Mad Card Disease, and it's one of the best routines I've ever seen using a double face and it uses a double facer in a very unique, different way. So I'm going to perform that for you right now, and then we'll talk about it. So I have something inside this, uh, inside this little envelope. I have uh, a playing card. It's actually a ten of diamonds. But what I've done is I've taken that ten of diamonds and I've ripped it up into four pieces. Um, so if you put this back together, this would actually be a proper ten of diamonds, but I've, I've ripped it up. Now, obviously, I can't put this card back together. It's ripped, it's ripped, it's, it's torn up. There's no way to do that. But I can show you something pretty cool with the, uh, with, the, with the ten of diamonds, the ripped up ten of diamonds. Now, it's important that you remember that there's four pieces. And when you look at a ten of diamonds, you've got uh, indexes and non-indexes. So you can see that there's four pieces. The, the, the ones with a ten on it, they're what we call index pieces. The ones with no ten on it, they're the non-index pieces. Now, Sarah's behind the camera. Her hands are busy. But if she was free, I would take one of the index pieces and put it into her hand. And I'd take one of the non-index pieces and put it into her hand as well. Obviously, she's not free, but we'll pretend that's Sarah's hand there. And then I would hold on to these pieces. So these pieces would be held on to me. So both me and Sarah have got a, a, an index and a non-index piece. Now watch. All I have to do is snap. And when I do, the magic happens. You see, now I've got the two pieces with an index on. See, I've got a 10 and a 10. And Sarah has the two non-index pieces, which is really cool. Now I'm going to go one step further. Uh, maybe with four pieces, there's too much to watch. I'll get rid of one piece. I'll get rid of this piece as well. So we've only got two pieces to follow now. Now it's a lot easier when you've just got two pieces to follow. So watch. I'm going to put them here. Now again, if Sarah, if I had an actual spectator here, I would take out the non-index piece and I would give them this piece here, the index piece, and they'd hold it in their hand. But obviously we'll do it like this for now. We'll do it like this and I'll pretend to be the, the spectator's hand, and all I have to do is squeeze, and when I squeeze, the pieces change again, which is really cool. I mean, it really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's so weird. But I said at the beginning, and, and that is a pretty cool trick, but I said at the beginning that it is absolutely, completely, and totally impossible to... Um, actually be able to restore the pieces of card and it is impossible unless you do this you see that would be a big finish and there's no better way to finish this trick than to put those pieces back together and that is mad card disease so that's mad card disease. The reason that David called it mad card disease is his presentation all revolves around having to put a card down. He gets kind of really emotional about it. I had a really terrible time the other day. I had to put a card down. I'm really sad. Look, this is the card that I had to put down. And if you've ever seen David Acker perform, that works for him. It doesn't really work for me. So I kind of go down a kind of a more, um, a more traditional type of presentation for it. Um, the reset to this, by the way, is great. You just put this away inside the envelope and you reset, you just put that in your top pocket and you're ready to go again. Now, what's really nice about this is it's just one card. The magic is happening in the spectator's hand. Now, when David originally um, wrote this up, it was a two-phase routine. There wasn't a restoration. However, in the additional information in the comments, he talks about how you could uh, add a restoration by using a hidden wallet. 
Um, I think a wallet's a bit too much to carry around for one card. But when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. So I added a Himba envelope to the routine. So I carry the pieces in an envelope, which makes sense. You'd have them in an envelope anyway. I take the pieces out of the envelope. I do the routine. And at the beginning, I kind of say, hey, I can't restore this. That'd be impossible. But I can show you something pretty cool with this. I then go into that really nice two-phase routine. And at the end, I say, well, you couldn't... I told you you couldn't... Um, uh, you couldn't... Um, uh, I, I told you I couldn't restore it, but let's see if we can do it. And then you've got the restoration at the end, which is great. And then once you've got this card in play, you can examine that. To be honest, I just put this away in my pocket. Nobody ever wants to look at the envelope. They always want to look at the card, uh, which is great. Now, the actual meat and bones of the routine, the two-phase routine, there is so much to love here. It's a very different way of using a, a double-faced card because, first of all, in the routine, he's using one of those cards in the deck that a lot of people don't use. When you buy a deck of double faces, you get some cards that have got different um, faces on each side, and then you get some cards like the uh, like the Ten of Diamonds, where they've got the same card on each side, and it's kind of like, well, what am I going to use this for? He uses one of those cards in a really beautiful way, um, and, and he's able, but just by using a piece of that double facer, and by using other pieces, and using really simple slights like, a, like an Elmsley Count, he's able to have so many really nice displays in that routine, and the magic is so strong. When you take out those four pieces, for walk around, this is perfect, because when you take out those four pieces, and you show it and you say look I've got this ripped up card and then you know they're holding on to what they think an index and a non-index and they change places it is really magical so pros to this it happens in the spectator's hands it's not difficult to do it's literally a double lift in an elderly count it's an instant reset it's examinable at the end to a fashion nobody ever wants to look at the, the envelope I've done this hundreds of times um no table required. You can do it anytime, anywhere. It actually works to a bigger audience. I've done this in a parlor show in the past, and it plays really big. And also, from a from a hooking the audience's point of view, this is a very different trick. You know, you bring this out and you say, well, let me show you something with a ripped up card. I've got an envelope here with one ripped up card. Let me show you something really weird. No one will have seen anything like that before. You know, we've all been there where we've gone up to an audience and we've gone, hey, pick a card. And they go, oh, I've seen this one. And they haven't really seen it. It's just that they think they have because they've seen a card trick in the past. Nobody will have ever seen uh, a trick that begins with you opening up an envelope and taking out a ripped card. And the restoration on the end is the, is, the, is the icing on the cake, in my opinion. When I performed this without the restoration, because when I first learned it, um, I, I did it just as is, without the restoration. And even though the reactions were great, uh, and the, the nice thing is, uh, every single time you're putting pieces in their hand that they can examine. So it feels like all the pieces can be examined, by the way, I should add that. Um, but when I did this, although it got a really great reaction to the two phases, I always had someone say, now can you put it back together? So, you know, I think that would be a negative if you couldn't do that. But adding the restoration at the end really makes it a super strong, powerful piece of magic. And as I say, it is a true working routine. It's a true anytime, anywhere working routine that just absolutely kills every single time. Um, so there you go. It's David Acker's um, Mad Card Disease, Mad Card Disease, and you can learn it from random acts of magic. I would highly recommend learning it. Now let's get on with the second routine. So the second trick using double faces you've probably never seen before is Gordon Beam's Las Vegas opener. Uh, now there's kind of an interesting history behind this. Uh, Gordon Beam brought out a routine called Joker Joker, which was a way of magically finding the two Jokers from a pack of cards. It was designed as an opener. Um, and that was a pretty good trick. That was an okay trick. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't groundbreaking, but it was okay. Uh, but he he used a move in there, or a couple of quite unique moves. And then there was a bonus routine at the end of this booklet that came with the routine called the Las Vegas Opener. And it's kind of widely accepted that the bonus routine is like a million times better than the Joker Joker routine. And what Las Vegas Opener is, is it's a, it's... It's a open prediction. Now, if you don't know what an open prediction is, the whole concept of an open prediction is at the very beginning of the routine, the uh, magician will openly say, you are going to pick the 
whatever the card might be. And, and then the spectator gets a complete free choice of card and it is meant to be very free choice. And then at the end, the prediction is correct. So it's an open prediction. Lots of different ways of doing this, lots of different plots throughout the years. Um, to be honest, I think this is the best version of the open prediction I've ever seen. And I'll tell you why in a few minutes, but I'm gonna perform the routine for you first of all. So let's get straight on with the performance. So uh, I'm gonna be asking Sarah to help me behind the camera again. Uh, Sarah, you're gonna be my glamorous assistant. 52 cards, they're all there, they're all different, and they really are. Uh, we'll put the box away for a minute. Now, Sarah, you, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to make an open prediction. So I'm going to predict something that's going to happen. You are going to pick the four of spades, okay? okay? I'm telling you right now, you, Sarah, are going to pick the four of spades. Now, I want you, as I go through, to just say stop. Stop. Now, which card do you want? Because it's a completely free choice. That, that one, middle one, yeah. That one right there. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I'll flip these over. Now, let's see if there's a four of spades here. There's a four of hearts, but there's no four of spades. There's a four of clubs, okay. but there's no four of spades. Now, I'm going to give you a choice. You can either stick with that card, or I can go further down, and you can touch a different card. No, no that's fine. You want that one right there. Are you yep. sure? Now, let's have a look and see if the four of spades turns up anywhere, because if it turns up somewhere, it means I've failed. There's no four of spades there. Uh, there's no four of spades there. There's a three of hearts. There's four of diamonds. But there's no four of spades. There's a six of spades. Oops, sorry. Um, there's a two of spades. I don't see the four of spades. No. Do you see the four of spades? And I said to you at the beginning, you, you were going to pick the four of spades. And you left one card face down there. And I gave you the choice to change your mind. Look at the four of spades. Well, let's have a look. Check it out. There it is right there. <laughs> The four of spades, which is pretty cool. It's yeah. pretty cool. But you know what? I'm going to do something that most magicians will never do. I'm going to repeat the trick. I'm okay. going to do it one last time. And I'm going to tell you right now, this time, Sarah, you are going to pick the ace of hearts. Okay. You're going to pick the ace of hearts. Now, once again, I'm going to go through. Just say stop anytime you want. Um, Stop. Which one do you want? That one there, that one there? The, the end one. Yeah, the first one you took. That one there? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Let's have a look. Uh, I said the Ace of Hearts. Now, let's have a look here. I see a... Uh, uh, there's no Ace of Hearts there. There's a Three of Hearts. Uh, there's a Two of Hearts. Now, again, do you want to stick with that? I can go further down if you want me to. Because I know what you're going to say later on. You're going to say, what would have happened if I'd gone further down? Okay, let's go a bit further down. You want to go a bit further down? Where do you want? Stop. Stop. There. Which one there? The middle one. That one there? No, the next one. That one there? Yes. Okay, now, let's have a look. There's a two of spades. Yeah. You know what? There's no ace of hearts in this section. So I'm really glad that you didn't, uh, you, you, you went further down. That, that okay. helped me. So thank you. Do you want this one? Do you want to go further down no, again? No, we'll stick. No. Are you sure? Yeah. So I, um, now there's the four of spades that you picked earlier. Mm -hmm. um, there's the ace of hearts. But, well, sorry, the ace of clubs. But we said the ace of hearts. There's the ace of diamonds. Um, I don't see an ace of hearts. I see an ace of spades. But I don't see an ace of hearts. And again, we left one card right down there near the middle. One card, one card only. And right there, that oh, is God. the ace of <laughs> hearts. There you go, proof. <laughs> there you go. So there you go. That's the Las Vegas opener by Gordon Beam. I cannot tell you how much I love that trick. It is that clean every single time. I love the fact that you can repeat it because it's so strong the first time you do it. Inevitably, people say, do that again, do that again. You know that. You've been there where you're performing magic and people love it so much. It's like, I'll do that again. Maybe it's because they want to try and figure it out or whatever it may be. You can repeat this immediately with a different card. Now, once you perform this routine, uh, you're, all you have to do is take two cards out of the deck and you're left with a regular pack of cards and you can set this trick up in seconds. You can literally have what you need in your pocket and you can add it to the deck at any point that you want to. The other thing is, because Sarah's holding the camera, I did everything, but it can be done in the hands of the spectators. And what I normally do when I do this is the first time I do it, I do everything, just like he showed me. And then the second time, I'll get the spectator to do it. So they'll flip the cards over, they'll spread the cards, they'll do everything and it will still work even though I haven't even touched the deck. It is that strong. It is really easy to do. There is no sleight of hand in that at all. It is completely self-working. 
Um, and, and, and as I say, the deck is left examinable. The, there's two cards that aren't examinable, but you can very, very easily just flip the deck over and be in a situation where you can just very easily ditch those two cards before you go into a, you know, whatever routine you want to go into next. It does make a great opening routine, especially if you're kind of going down the mental magic route. Now, I use the table, but you don't need a table. It can be done completely in the spectator's hands as well. So you can do it by having somebody cut their hands over. Look, I'm going to do this. Let me just put some cards down here. Uh, so it can be done in the spectator's hands no problem and it works really well with a zoom show so if you're doing a zoom or a virtual show it works really well because you're openly saying to everybody that's watching you are going to pick this card and then you can be very clean what this one this one this one are you sure you want this one so it works brilliantly with a virtual show and it's one of those tricks that's kind of when it first came out you know, people talked about it, but, but, but not that much because it wasn't even the main routine. And now I haven't seen anyone do this for years. And every single time I've shown it a magician, they're like, oh my gosh, what's that? I've never seen that before. It is, in my opinion, the best open prediction um, on the market. And it's very, very easy to do. And it's available still now. Um, so just go and find open prediction by, uh, you know, go, sorry, go and find Joker Joker by Gordon Beam. You won't, it comes with the gimmicks, although they're very easy to get hold of. You won't be disappointed. It's a regular deck of cards. It's examinable. It's a real worker's routine. Okay, so the final trick uh, using a double face card that you've probably never seen before is another David Acker trick. It's another trick out of the Random Acts of Magic. I know hundreds of tricks with double faces, but when I was thinking about what routines to put onto this video, there were two routines that sprung to mind. There's two routines in David's book uh, using double faces, and they're both used in such a unique, different way that you don't normally see double faces used in. Um, and so immediately it was like, oh my gosh, I've got to put those two in. So we've got a second routine. This is just another reason to get David Acker's book, Random Acts of Magic. This one is called Jim's Pick, and I've done this for a long time. Um, and I use uh, a slightly different presentation that's based around my son, Ryland. So I'm going to perform this for Sarah, and then we'll talk about what's so good about this. So guys, uh, this is the uh, this is the routine. It uses a pack of playing cards. Uh, they're all there. They're all different. So before I tell you exactly what I'm going to do here, I should point something out to you. Uh, my son Ryland, he is an amazing magician. He's uh, seven years old, but he's really good at magic. And uh, a couple of days ago, he came over to me in the morning before he we went to school, and he said, "Daddy," and I was like, "Yes, son." He said, um, "I've got something for you," and he gave me a card. He gave me this card here, which is interesting because I use blue back cards and he gave me a red back card and he wrote on it, Ryland's Pick. I was like, what is, what is this for? And he said, well, look, it's really simple. I know you do a lot of magic and I know sometimes you get tricks wrong. I'm like, yeah, it happens. He said, well, if you ever get yourself into a, a position or a situation where you've got a trick and you just don't, you can't find someone's card, use this and this will get you out of trouble. Now, I can't see that this will actually help, but he's seven years old and I promised him that I would put this down on the table every single time I do a card trick. So this is my son's Ryland's pick, but we won't need it uh, because I'm not gonna get this wrong. But anyway, anyway, back to the trick. So all, all the cards are here, they're all different. We're gonna try and do something with, um, uh, with Sarah behind the camera. She's gonna help me here. I'm gonna get you to pick a card, Sarah, and I'm not gonna spread the cards out and say pick a card. I'm gonna get you to think of one. So I'm gonna go through the cards like this. And as you see the cards go past, what I want you to do is think of a card. Have you thought of one? Yes. Are you happy? Yes. Because if you're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, good. So my job is to find your card. Now it's interesting because you didn't take it out. You just thought of it, right? Yeah. So it's gonna be very interesting. Uh, ha Most magicians would go through the cards face down and put one down on the table, but I'm gonna do it face up. I'm gonna take one card out face up. Concentrate on the card. One card face up, one card. Are you concentrating? Yeah. Jack of hearts. Your card, the Jack of hearts. No. That wasn't your card? No. Are you sure? Yes. Um, okay, I thought it would be the Jack of Hearts. Well, I suppose we've got this um, Dick Ryland's card here. I mean, this has been here the whole time, and you just literally thought of a card. I mean, Ryland put down the uh, the Ten of Spades. I don't know if that's your card or not, but was that your card? Yes. There you go. He's an amazing <laughs> kid, that Ryland. I don't know how he did it, but that's 
that's just brilliant. I'm going to put that away and, and hopefully that'll help me the next time I do some magic. So that is the routine. That's uh, in, in uh, David's book, he called it Jim's Pick and it was about his friend Jim. I uh, just slightly changed the presentation to make it about my son. Uh, and, and, and it's very, very, very clean. Now, negatives. I'll, I'll give you the, the big negative out of the way straight away. This is a gaff deck. This, is, this deck cannot be used for any other routine other than this trick, okay? It is very gaffed. If you wanted to do something else with it, um, half the deck is normal. So if you wanted to do something else with it, you could probably, you know, like, t let me take four cards out. Let me take out the four aces. You could do like a, 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 a twisting the aces or something or a small packet trick before you then go into this routine. But you're not going to be able to use this as, as, as your regular deck. It's, it's very gaffed. Um, that's your negative out the way. The positive to this is it is really strong for a couple of different reasons. First of all, they only think of a card. They don't take it out or anything like that. They just think of a card. And, and the card that they think of ends up being the card that's on the table from the very, very beginning, which is incredible when you think about it. Also, I love the presentation to this. I love the hook. I love the idea of taking this card out at the beginning and explaining that this is... Uh, you know, uh, this is this is being given to you as a get out of jail card. You put that down there. You then go through the whole routine, and then boom, that ends up being the card that they merely thought of. I mean, that's really really strong. Now you don't need a table for this. I'm putting it down on the table. As long as you've got decent audience management, this card can be put on a spectator's hand. Absolutely fine. Absolutely not a problem. Um, as I say, the big negative is the deck cannot be examined at all. But to be honest, it's not like something super visual has happened. Um, I've done this quite a lot and I've never had a situation where somebody goes, hey, I want to examine that deck of cards. Please, can I examine it? Nobody ever says that, especially if you switch this deck in. So you've started with a regular deck of cards and you can switch this deck in very, very easily by when you reach for the Ryland card. So you can say, I'm going to do something really difficult now, so I'm going to need this. And then you reach, you put this card down, and that's when you switch the deck. Or, as I said, you could have this set up, so you're doing some stuff. The, the, the top 26 cards of the deck are normal. So you could start off by doing stuff with those cards and routine some stuff together where you're only using half the deck and then go into this routine as a finale. And to be clear, this is a finale because it's so impossible. Uh, you know, as magicians, we're conditioned to know that we can find playing cards very, very easily. But if you think about it, it's they think of a card and the card that you put down on the table from the very beginning is their card. It's a very interesting way of using a double facer as well. Uh, you will need 26 double facers for this. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, so if you get yourself a double face deck, you'll be able to put this together. Uh, and it's kind of interesting. In David's book, when he wrote this up, um, and I learned this years ago, however, I've got a pretty good memory for this sort of stuff. Uh, in David's book, when he wrote this up, he, he wrote something at the very, very beginning, which does, which is true. And uh, I'm hoping I can find it. And here we go. Um, here we go. He actually says, when I read a magic book, particularly a card magic book, I tend to skip over tricks that require gimmicks, at least on the first look. Uh, in this case, however, there's no cause for concern. Jim's pick is completely impromptu and can be done with a borrowed deck, assuming that you have 26 double faces. But he is right. Uh, when you get a book and you're looking through it, uh, the stuff with gimmicks, you kind of push to one side, but they're some of the strongest routines in the book. And this is a perfect example. You know, I do a lot of stuff with, with gimmick decks, but this is one that goes back into my act again and again and again. Highly recommend it. It's a really cool routine. So there you go, guys. Uh, three routines using double face cards that you've probably never seen before. Let me know what you think. What do you think of the root three routines? Let's get a dialogue going down in the comments. Have you used them before? Which ones have you used? How have you found that they've gone? Are there double faced uh, tricks with double faces that I've missed that you think I should have uh, looked at? Because I want to do a follow up video to this. I think out of all of the card gaffes, double faces are the most. Um, uh, you, there's so many different uses you can do with them. They're, they're they're very, very versatile. Uh, so I do want to do a follow-up video. So let me know if there's any routines that you've seen with double faces that work really well. And do you use double faces in your act? I bet you there's people out there that do anniversary waltz. I bet there's people out there that do McDonald's aces and, and they've never seen any of these routines. And also, if there's a, a three-trick three series that you want to see in the future, let me know. I've got a whole bunch of ideas, but I'd love more ideas off you. Um, outside of that, thank you very much for supporting the channel, guys. Really appreciate it. Please subscribe to the channel.
We go live every single day with two videos. So uh, I'm going to be back tomorrow with a magic rant. And then over the weekend, we've got a Q&A and an honest trailer. And I will be back at uh, six o'clock tomorrow with Magic Live. Thanks very much. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV.